Mr. Varoufakis, you just met the president of the ECB. How was this meeting with Mario Draghi? It was actually very good and very friendly, very frank. We got an opportunity, first of all, to get to know one another. Uh, I began, I can say that, by uh, expressing my admiration for the way that he has steered the ECB since he took over from Mr. Trichet in uh, a way that uh, needs to be commended. Uh, he navigated uh, the Euro through very stormy seas with very few degrees of freedom and in, and in an exemplary fashion. And I wasn't simply trying to get on his good side. I always thought that about Mr. Draghi. Um, we also had an opportunity for him to explain to me and to my colleagues uh, the constraints and the rules and the regulations of the ECB um, properly as a, an independent central banker should, should do. We got an opportunity also to outline to them our plan for reforming Greece, for ending the uh, never-ending Greek crisis and the debt deflationary spiral. And uh, I'm leaving the building with, or I left the building with uh, a great deal of encouragement that um, the Eurozone is working. In the first days after the election, we hear about haircut. Now we hear a lot about debt reconstructing. Are these just mistakes of beginners? Not in the slightest. Let me, let, let me put this to rest. What we are being proposed, what our partners are telling us in conversations is, look, don't ask for a haircut. We'll give you an extension of maturities and a reduction of, the, of interest. Do you know what that, that is? It's a haircut. It's a haircut of the actual value of the um, um, repayments that we're going to be making. Add, uh, as a finance minister of Greece, I have a moral duty to minimize the losses of our partners from this program, not to pretend that there were no losses if we say that the face value has been saved. Now, if our partners in the Eurogroup and elsewhere don't like the word haircut, I shall respect that. There are words we don't like in Greece, like program, like troika. I can understand that words can have a very significant um, poignancy. But let's get down to work in order to minimize the actual costs to everyone in Europe, and particularly to the parts of Europe that are suffering the most, because Europe was not designed properly, well, the Eurozone was not, and then when the major earthquake hit in 2008, and it was clear to everyone who had the eyes and ears to, to look at the situation and hear the sounds of the crisis, uh, it was clear to everyone that the, the way that in which Europe responded to this earthquake was perhaps worse than the earthquake itself, because denial and the wrong medicine can make a disease worse the, uh, 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 with detrimental effects for all of us. You talk about the right medicine. What is the right medicine for Greece and what is a possible solution for the financial crisis of Greece? Well, let me just correct you on one thing, if I may. Sure. I never use the word crisis for Greece. And I, I, I don't use it for a very simple reason. Greece has had a catastrophe, an implosion, uh, a humanitarian crisis, if you want. But it is nonsense to think of it in terms of a Greek economic or financial crisis. Imagine now that we were not here in Frankfurt, this beautiful spot, but we were in, let's say, South Dakota in 1931. And we were talking about the South Dakota crisis. How sensible would that be? It wouldn't be. There was a financial crisis of the United States of America, of the Western world. This is a crisis of the Eurozone. The reason why you're talking to me is because my country is the canary in the mine. It's, not, it's very weak, that's why it dies first. But it's, it's not responsible for the methane in the mine that uh, has caused it. We are responsible for the malignancies in the state, for the fact that we have not reformed. This is the reason why we're the canary in the mine. It is not the reason why you have deflation now in the whole of Europe, why the European Central Bank is finding it so hard to uh, be effectual in its monetary policy, to reach its target of just below 2% of inflation, for uh, proud nations like France and Italy to be able to stand on their own two feet. We are simply the first domino that fell, but we're not responsible for the domino effect. And unless we all pull together uh, and we look at this as a systemic crisis that needs to be dealt with systematically, and instead of that, we are pointing fingers at each other saying, well, what are you going to do about it? What is the other? 
person going to do about the other. Um, we're not going to get out of this. So we, we have to think as Europeans and to sit down and, 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 and reboot our policy uh, tools. You ask for smoother reform conditions for the Greek people. What does Greece, on the contrary, has to offer to Europeans? As I travel from one European capital to another, my first, my introduction to uh, my counterparts and to our interlocutors is very simple. Will you help us reform this country? We are an inexperienced government. We've never, uh, none of us have, has any experience of government. Uh, we are even, one could say, a fractious lot with different views. Uh, you know, we are a broad church, as I like to say. But what we do have going for us is that we were not corrupt, not yet. Right? And uh, we, we are a window of opportunity. So the question is, will Europe help us? Or is Europe going to continually waterboard Greece, fearing that if Greece gets breathing space, we'll go back to our old ways? So this is a social contract that we have to strike between Greece and our European friends. We have to convince them that we are serious, and they have to give Greece a chance to grow within a Europe that is fostering shared prosperity as opposed to shared austerity. Tomorrow you will meet the German finance minister, Mr. Schäuble. What will be your message to him? I think everything about us will be new to them because there is a major disconnect between that which we believe and say and the other which others claim that we believe and say. So communication and establishing a modus vivendi is uh, of the essence. It's our moral duty as Europeans to understand each other. And let, let me just be, be very brief um, in, in one example. We have been portrayed as a populist party, an anti-European party. Nothing could be further than the truth. We are not populist in the sense that we have not promised everything to everyone. We've been very careful to target the humanitarian crisis and I believe that Dr. Schäuble, I believe that Monsieur Sapin, whom I saw the other day, I believe that you, every decent European will agree that it is not right that we should have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of Greeks sleeping rough and going hungry at night as a result of the failure of Europe and of the Greek government to deal with this debt deflationary uh, crisis. Of all the nations in Europe, I believe that the Germans are much closer to our heart and they have a much better chance of understanding this very simple message. If you humiliate a proud nation for too long and subject it to the trials and tribulations of a debt deflationary crisis without any light at the end of the tunnel, all that happens is that the serpent's egg begins to hatch. And when I go back to Greece and I go back to my parliament, I will have to sit side by side with a Nazi party that is the third largest party in Greece. I am sure that you, Dr. Schäuble, Mrs. Merkel, and every person who walks the streets of Frankfurt or every city and town of Germany feels solidarity with this plight and feels that it is not in the interest of Germany, it is not in the interest of Greece to have this kind of situation emerge because, let's say, face it, nastiness spreads and it contaminates Europe. We don't want a postmodern 1930s in this continent of ours. You ask for help. What are you expecting from the European Union? The one thing we're requesting for is that we're not presented with an ultimatum. The ultimatum being sign on the dotted line that you disavow your objections to the current program or else give us until the end of the month, until the, in the end of May, so that we can table our proposals, we can deliberate, not even negotiate, deliberate with our partners and by the end, before the summer begins, by the end of the spring, we can have a, a new contract between Greece and, uh, and, and Europe, so as to begin the process that will lead to the wonderful equilibrium where you will not have to interview me, where Greece is not in the headlines, where the Greek festering wound stops being something that itches and irks and annoys the rest of Europe. Mr. Varoufakis, thank you very much for this interview. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.